If you're a new Instacart uh, delivery person, you probably are wondering, how does it all work? Today, we're gonna teach you how to tackle an Instacart batch. Stick around after the break, and we're gonna tell you everything you need to know about completing a batch for Instacart. Hi, this is Gabe Etzhoken with The Rideshare Guy, and today I'm gonna to talk about completing an Instacart batch. All right, so first thing you wanna know, what's a batch? A batch is what uh, Instacart calls an order, and it could be uh, two or even three or four orders all stuck together uh, for the one trip that you go to the grocery store. So that batch is that list of items that you need to purchase for your customer. So first, you want to find a decent batch, okay? What's a decent batch? Well, depending on where you are and what your personal strategy is as an Instacart delivery person is, it could be different. Me, I like to go to stores where I know where everything is, where it's not too far from my house, and also um, where you don't have to deliver too far, and where you don't think that there's gonna be any problems like ch long checkout lines, or here uh, during in the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area during the, uh, the shelter in place order, um, where it uh, takes too long to wait to get it. So you wanna avoid those orders that are gonna cost you extra time. You also wanna get the orders that are offering the peak time bonuses, um, and also uh, where there's a decent tip on there. Okay, to accept the batch, you're going to slide the accept batch, and if uh, you're the first driver to accept it, then you will be assigned that batch, and then uh, it'll give you a option to navigate to the store if you don't know how to get to the store. So uh, you do that, and when you arrive at the store, park as close as you can um, to the front door of the store, and uh, and then tell the, tell the system that you're there and uh, uh, slide the slider where it says um, ready to shop. Make sure you do that. Okay, now uh, when you're in the store, make sure you're in the store and look at the app. Look through, look at all the orders. Look at uh, all the different orders and kind of think about where they are in the store. You wanna do this strategically. Now that's this is kind of advanced technique. Your first few orders are gonna be very, very slow. Take your time. You're gonna make like two or three dollars an hour. Um, and it's it's not a big deal. Um, just take your time, learn the system, don't rush. If you rush, you're gonna make mistakes. So just go slow, work your way through the list. Now, as you get better at this, you're gonna wanna be more, a little more strategic and uh, you know because you don't wanna be going back and forth across the store, especially if you're pushing a heavy cart, okay? So you wanna you know do things basically in a big clockwise circle through the store. And uh, to do that, the app actually uh, helps you. It tells you what aisle each thing is in and it does it sequentially, right? Like aisle nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, produce, right? Now, the exception to this, frozen foods. Don't go to frozen foods first, obviously. Get the frozen foods last. You know, if it's just a couple frozen items, get your cart in line, ask the person in line, hey, watch my cart. Run to the frozen food aisles, get your frozen foods, zip back to the cart, and then you're at the checkout line and you're done. Looking for items. This is probably the one of those frustrating things. Now, if you're a middle-aged uh, person like me, you spend most of your day looking for things anyway, so why not get paid for it? Anyway, um, when you uh, are looking for an item, you gotta make sure it's the exact same thing. And in any case, you're gonna find the item, you're gonna scan it. If it's not the exact right thing, um, then the, the app will, uh, will tell you that it's not the right thing and you have to look for it. And sometimes like the difference is so subtle, like my God, I was looking for ice cream and the Briars ice cream, they had like creamy vanilla and homemade vanilla and they're two different things. I dare you to tell me the difference between homemade vanilla and creamy vanilla, whatever. Um, so make sure it's the, it's the correct thing. Now there are instances where it really isn't there. And actually at the local Safeway by my house, it usually isn't there because they don't do a good job of keeping things stocked. They didn't even do a good job of keeping things stocked before the coronavirus. But um, anyway, uh, the system does have uh, a way that you can substitute items and you just look for a substitute. Uh, sometimes the app will recommend a substitute. If it doesn't have that, you can recommend a good substitution. And what's gonna happen is that uh, they're gonna notify the customer and the customer is going to approve or just cancel that item and have it refunded.
So substituting and refunding items, it's it's pretty self-explanatory and it, it all works through the scanner. And by the way, kudos to Instacart. Uh, their scanner works really, really well, even when um, even when data service isn't that great. So um, it, it works. You, it, you, it's very obvious how to how to do substitutions. Uh, like I said, take your time with this stuff, and you can always go back and redo things. So take your time. Be careful. Make sure your customer's getting the right things, and that you're not paying for the wrong thing, because you don't want to go through all that. So what if you need to contact your customer about something? Hey, do you want, did you want boneless pork chops or did you want uh, this kind of thing or are the brown eggs okay? Uh, just tap in that upper right corner of the app and you'll see the little communication icon and you can either uh, text or call your, your customer. Um, and uh, they're usually pretty communicative. They're usually, they know that you're out there shopping and you know, if they got something going on, they're usually like on the edge of their seat, like, oh, is he gonna get the right thing? So um, they're happy to contact you back. If they don't, then just, uh, just cancel the item. It's not a big deal. Okay, you reached the end of the list and now you're ready to go to checkout. Uh, get in the checkout line. And when the checker is ready to check you out, you show the checker the uh, your app, and it'll say um, Instacart. Um, I don't know where I live. Like two thirds of the shoppers in any grocery store are Instacart buyers, so like they know they know what's up. The checker knows what to do. Um, if you have multiple orders within that batch, this is now on you. Make sure you don't mix up those orders, okay? Because the checker is going to ring everything up, and everything's going to be all higgledy piggly, and there's going to be screw ups. So. Um, one good thing, maybe one way to do it is to put a uh, bachelor basket uh, in the cart and then you can keep the orders separate that way. Or you can, if it's a smaller order, you can put uh, some of that stuff up in the little baby part on the, uh, you know, close, closest to you. Um, or, you know, as you're getting in line, just scroll through the app and see what goes with what order. It's not as daunting. And you know what? I don't care if there's a hundred people behind you, you're at work. This is your money and livelihood on the line. If you need to take 40 minutes sorting everything out, uh, they can call security and have you dragged away. But take the time to do it right. Don't worry about those other people. Race your own race and uh, you know do it do it the right way so you don't have to uh, go back because it's it's horrible if you have to go back to the store, right? So uh, once you're ready to pay, um, it's it's pretty easy. You can use Apple Pay or uh, uh, Android Pay if you're set up with that, or uh, Instacart has sent you a credit card. So just use that credit card, and then you're gonna photograph the receipt, and then you're done. Um, if you had multiple orders within that batch, then you have to go through that with each thing, but basically you should be good to go. Make sure that the baggers have bagged everything separately, and um, and uh, load it up in your car, and, uh, and uh, when you finish that order, you are going to get a, uh, a notification screen to navigate to the customer. Couldn't be any easier, right? Okay, now you've used the nav to customer and you're at the right door and you're gonna knock on the door or ring the doorbell. I know it's a weird thing for Uber and Lyft drivers to do. Um, and, uh, you know, during these epidemic times, you're going to set their groceries down in front of their door and you're going to walk back at least six feet, maybe more. And if they open the door, uh, greet them, say, hey, I'm with Instacart, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if they have any questions about what you did or you have any questions, uh, but really it, it should be fine. There shouldn't be anything to do. Um, and then you mark the order complete and uh, you're going to get marked as complete and you're going to get paid. Now, what if the what if the customer isn't there? Well, there might be instructions in the app. Make sure you go back and look for that, okay? There could be instructions uh, saying, I'm not gonna be there, it's okay to leave it on the porch. Or I'm not gonna be there, but my daughter's home. Or whatever. Um, but if there's no instructions and there's no one home, call, text, give them a minute or two. Um, not just, I would just leave it. All right, hey, thank you so much for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe so you can see the several videos that we post every week about how to maximize your earnings in this gig economy. Also, uh, make sure you use our referral code if you sign up to do Instacart. So, um, thanks very much for watching and remember to not drive yourself crazy.